Don't go in the butt dance, pumpkin patch. They got the thighs in there. Tarantula lovers, this way Alex and you are watching Tarantula Haven. Now for those of you who don't know, a tatai is sort of like a Cajun boogeyman. Something we tell the little children to stay away from some place that might be dangerous. So if you hear, don't go in the patans pumpkin patch, they got tatais in there. That means that you want to stay away because there's something in there that could get you. Now that's about the extent of my Cajun accent, so I'm not going to keep it up any longer. But I do want to share with you Patan's Pumpkin Patch. Now, Patan's Pumpkin Patch is a story that was featured on a website called The Moonlit Road. And that, that website is a website that my wife discovered years and years ago when she used to teach language arts. And she used to play audio files from that website, from all these different stories that they had on there. And it's a collection of old folk stories from the southern United States. States. Now this one comes to us from Louisiana and um, the author of Patan's Pumpkin Patch, he is Cajun and he speaks in the most wonderful Cajun accent and he also narrates his own story. So to listen to it, it just completely adds a whole new element just to listen to him say it in the actual dialect that it's meant to be uh, heard in. So this story is about him and his friend Shaoui and they go to, they live in this place called Acadia Parish and in that place, there is this uh, pumpkin patch called Patan's Pumpkin Patch that belongs to old man Patan. So all his life, he's been warned to not go into Patan's Pumpkin Patch because they have the thighs in there. And he and his friend Shaoui, they felt like one Halloween that they were too old to believe in the thighs. So they decide that they want to go into that pumpkin patch and they're going to carve some jack-o'-lanterns into those pumpkins and put a scare on old man Patan. But things take a wicked turn and um, I'm not going to disclose the rest because I would like for you to get the feel of it for yourself. But it is a really, really fun story and it's got sound effects and everything and it just makes it even more uh, rich for you. So anyway, that is Patan's Pumpkin Patch on the Moonlit Road and I will post a link down below in the description so that you can enjoy it for yourself. Now, this story made such an impression on me that when I heard the story and you know, my imagination gets going, it actually inspired me to um, create these little sculptures of pumpkins. And um, this one I made uh, years and years ago. It's my very first one and I hate it. I don't like the way it looks, but um, it was my first attempt. So not too bad. And then I started getting a little bit more creative and I did this one. I call this one Ralph. And uh, I've got this one, and I don't have a name for this one. It's kind of spooky looking there. <clears throat> and um, I carved this one recently. I just carved this one last week, and I, I actually featured the uh, the the time lapse of me carving it or sculpting it on my um, Patreon. So if you want to be a Patreon member, you'll see that there. And then this one's also another one that I did a long time ago. I call this one Vinny for obvious reasons. Um, so anyway. Yeah, those are going to be featured in my video today. And my video today is on the pumpkin patch tarantula. I'm sure you guessed that by now. And I could go without featuring the pumpkin patch tarantula on my Halloween species showcase. So yes, we are doing the pumpkin patch tarantula and it is such a beautiful tarantula. Here it is. The Hapalopus species Columbia, commonly known as the pumpkin patch tarantula. This species is endemic to the Pacific coast of Colombia, South America. Its native country endures high heat and humidity, but some of the area from which this tarantula hails has higher altitude and experiences heavy rainfall only three months out of the year. That being said, this tarantula can withstand drier conditions and does well at room temperature. I was always drawn to this tarantula due to its beautiful orange and black coloration with spots resembling a pumpkin patch on its abdomen, hence the common name. However, I never kept one until recently because I was intimidated by its diminutive size as slings and its similar appearance to a true spider.
It wasn't until I learned how tough and hardy this tarantula is that I decided to try my hand at one and I was not disappointed. This species is fast growing so they don't stay tiny for long. Well, at least not as tiny as they start out. They put on color very quickly, usually by 3rd or 4th instar, and just get more brilliant from there. They are not a very long-lived species by tarantula standards, with females living approximately 8 to 10 years and males 3 to 4. Males can mature quickly in about a year and females in about 2. Although this species is considered a dwarf tarantula, there are two variations of this species. This is the Hapalopus species columbia large or gross, which can reach 3 to 4 inches, which is not considered a true dwarf. Then there is the Hapalopus species columbia klein, which only gets to about 2 to 2 and a half inches and is considered a true dwarf. The pumpkin patch tarantula is a burrowing species and will usually burrow as tiny slings. As they grow older, they will become bolder and web up their enclosure around the burrow, but they will stay out in the open most of the time waiting for prey, only retreating if they feel threatened. They can be considered somewhat high strung and prone to bolting even so far as to bolt out of the enclosure if they get spooked for whatever reason. So great care must be taken when feeding that you are ready with a catch cup and never take your eyes off of it if you have the lid open. Pumpkin patch tarantulas rarely bite or give a threat posture, but will prefer to run and hide. Mine have also kicked urticating hairs at me, but I've never suffered any effects from it. I keep mine in a 4x4 Amec box, but will upgrade it to a larger enclosure as it grows. I keep my slings in smaller Amec boxes and had them in the dram vials they came in when they were tiny slings. I started my slings out on tiny pre-killed roach nymphs, but fruit flies will work as well. These little guys are survivors and will quickly begin taking down their own prey without any help.
I regret not having gotten into the pumpkin patch tarantulas sooner. Don't let their tiny size as slings intimidate you because they are tough and hardy little guys and they will quickly outgrow that tiny sling stage. In no time you will have a beautiful flashy tarantula that will sit out on display in its webbed up enclosure giving you years of enjoyment and colors that will make your friends say wow. Some runner-up tarantulas in the Halloween Species Showcase was the Salmopius erminia, known for their orange and black coloration. They're beautiful and striking. This one is very defensive and I haven't had her very long so I figured I'd wait till she got a little bit more size and do her up proper. I also considered doing Meg Mucklebones my Salmopius Cambridgei simply because of her name and her intimidating size, but she's so sweet natured and she didn't exactly fit what I was looking for so I figured I'd hold off on her. I also considered doing my Hedriscoda Maculata, however she's very fast, very defensive, and possesses potent venom, and I pretty much knew how this one was going to turn out. I would end up having to chase her around the room and put myself in unnecessary danger, and I just didn't really think I needed to go through all that right now. However, there's always next year and I'm looking to change it up because I don't want to present the same thing every single year. So look forward to that for the next Halloween Species Showcase. There you have it, the Hapalopus species Columbia or the Pumpkin Patch Tarantula. Such a gorgeous species and I kind of didn't like them at first. I, I love the colors, the contrasting colors, the orange and the black, and I admired them for the longest time, but I kind of didn't like that they looked a little bit like a true spider, especially since they don't get very large, but I was always intimidated by their tiny size when they are slings. Um, that's always been a factor with me. I always worry that I'm not gonna, that they're gonna die before I get them to any size. So, um, but my regret because I did not know that they were very hardy and they are feisty little things that will take down anything that they can overpower. So fruit flies at first and then little roach nymphs and so on and they'll even scavenge pre-killed prey. So very, very cool species to get into if you are interested and if you're worried about pulling the trigger on them because they're so tiny, don't worry, they grow very fast and they will take care of themselves. Definitely get into the pumpkin patch tarantula if you are thinking about it. And I forgot to mention that this little guy right here, the one that I most recently sculpted, his name is Squash, and obviously because he's got a squashy face. And um, the reason I bring that up is that I was considering reproducing them. Um, last year for Christmas, I bought myself all this stuff for resin casting, and I just haven't had a chance to really get into it and do any of that kind of stuff. We had a whole bunch of stuff happened early in the year, and of course the pandemic. So my attention has been focused elsewhere, and it just kind of uh, went by the wayside, but I still plan on getting into it. And I think that they'd make pretty interesting um, tarantula enclosure decorations and stuff like that. So I was thinking about maybe reproducing them and selling them on my Etsy store. I also plan on making other kinds of decorations and even water bowls, um, but in a stylistic fashion, like making, making it look like a log or something to that effect. So that's just an idea. Let me know in the comments down below if you think that that would be something that you would be interested in, and I will act on that and maybe make some and put some in the Etsy store. And before I go, I'd like to give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. And if you would like to become a Patreon supporter, any contribution would be greatly appreciated. You'll get access to exclusive content and more. And that does it for me tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Teespring store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise. I also have a Patreon page. All the links are down below in the description. Keep loving them tarantulas and have a happy and safe Halloween and 
Don't go in the Pat Dance Pumpkin Patch. They got the ties in there.